for this evening's Meet the Media. And on behalf of PR Newswire well, and St Paul's Cathedral, a very warm welcome and many thanks for coming along to tonight's event. It's great to see so many of you here. Uh, we have a policy of hosting our events in iconic London buildings and I think I can confidently say that you can't get any more iconic than St Paul's. As always, we endeavour to twin these iconic landmarks with world-class organisations and tonight we're extremely fortunate to welcome Lucia Adams, Digital Development Editor of The Times, itself an iconic and world-renowned publication. We've basically gone from being a free-for-all website to a subscription website to also publishing, being the first ever British newspaper to have a, an iPad app, publishing on Kindle, on iPhone, on Android phone. Um, and I, I kind of skipped over the iPad thing. Um, casting, casting my mind back, it's kind of thinking about that process, it was incredibly complicated and incredibly difficult. We were developing an, a newspaper app for a piece of equipment, a piece of technology that we hadn't actually put our hands on. Uh, we had developers dealing with code that was really quite foreign to them and it was this, this thing was going to do stuff that we had never imagined. You could maybe shake it to turn a page or whistle to, to, have a, to launch a video, all this weird stuff. We're now on a dozen platforms, which is quite a lot to kind of keep a handle on. Uh, we're developing technologies that uh, are unique in the newspaper industry, which basically enable us to launch onto new platforms. But let me take you back to 2010. Um, the Times announced that it was going to take this very brave t step and start uh, a subscription website. Everyone had an opinion on that. Uh, not many of them were very supportive. People were mainly saying, you know, news was a commodity, you could get news from anywhere. Uh, that only niche publishers would really succeed in charging for content if you know if you're a B2B publisher and something like that but we went ahead and did it anyway and fortunately the headlines have changed somewhat and I think we can confidently say that it's been a success and now every newspaper is trying to find ways to make its journalism pay the advent of uh, smartphone and tablet apps really opened the doors for publishers to start thinking about how they could make journalism pay. Um, I think the problem, the, the challenge really, is that if you have a legacy website which has all your content for free, it's possibly difficult to persuade readers that they should be paying for it on a slightly different platform. If you look across at The Economist and publishers in the States, there's a lot less fear of charging for journalism. And in fact, I think the Chicago Tri Tribune announced this week that it was going to be launching a subscription service. And today we make more money from advertising and subscriptions uh, than we did from advertising alone two years ago. So it's really revolutionized our business in a time of uh, uh, difficult markets for the publishing industry. Uh, we now have more people paying to read our journalism than, than we did two years ago. The other real advantage of starting to have a subscription model is that we get to know our readers. Uh, we understand where they are and uh, what sort of demographic groups they, they fit into, which is incredibly powerful when thinking about how we ensure that our journalism is relevant to them. So we know that they tend to have an income uh, of 50,000 or more. They're more likely to have children less likely to be married or divorced, uh, they're younger than our print readers and more likely to be female, which is uh, interesting if you're an advertiser. Um, so what, I hear you say, what, what difference does any of this make? The flip side of not charging for journalism is that you need to get an awful lot of traffic for your website. And there's two very easy ways to get a lot of traffic for your website, and that's to write about sex or Kim Kardashian. And I think ideologically, the Times probably struggles with that a little bit, or we do write about sex now and again, but from kind of a, a different perspective. Um, and it allows us to really stick to what our editorial values are, which is our columnists, its opinion, its news, and its business, and its sport. This importance of the reader in our minds really 
kind of it, it shifts the dynamic very uh, significantly but very subtly. We really need to think about what impact our journalism is having on our readers. Ten years ago when I started in journalism, I was writing for the property section and I'd get my commission, I'd go and do my research, um, I'd write my story, and then I'd move on to my next story. And usually all that happened before my story was even published. Nowadays, journalists have to think very differently about what impact their story has once it's out there. And it's really thinking about the story as be, being the beginning of the story in the eyes of the reader and working out how can we help readers engage with the story in interesting ways. There's a couple of examples. The tax uh, campaign that we recently ran was very much conceived with the idea that it's, it's reader discussion that would augment the story and really help push the agenda. And the Times Cities uh, Fit for Cycling campaign from the very beginning, we, we very much thought, OK, these are the outcomes that we want with this campaign. We want it to bring about real change. And we're going to allow readers to help us do that by tweeting to show their, their support, by helping them to write to their MP, by collecting addresses of people who were interested in the campaign and keeping them up to date and, and corralling them for when we needed extra rounds of support to kind of get bills pushed through and things like that. And from our point of view as a publisher, working out what mechanics we could uh, put in place to enable that. In the old days, I was trying to persuade uh, one of our reporters to come and kind of chat to readers online. And, and he said, what, the comments box? That's the wild west of the internet. I'm not going there. You know, that's where the mad people hang out. Um, and really, since we've had this change in dynamic, the comments area under articles has become this flourishing place of discussion and debate and I, I absolutely love this quote it's it's at the bottom of a piece which was talking about armchair activism in Syria and we had Matthew Paris and uh, Phil Collins were basically kind of having it out under the article and and kind of arguing against each other and this reader kind of wrote in saying you know that he, he just enjoyed watching the spectacle and being able to dip into it um, himself and you know he puts more popcorn in the microwave and kind of carry on, carries on watching we've had people kind of write to us and say this is the reason I subscribe to the time so it's a it's a really simple thing but it has a massive effect on people and it's something that we very much try to um, foster and, and, and encourage with journalists this is another very simple thing I think if there's probably Two messages that I could, I hope you come away with today. Uh, they'll, they'll be that engagement is not a fluffy nice to have. It's a business imperative for us. And secondly, that you can achieve an awful lot through really simple means. Email bulletins. Uh, I know it sounds like a really old world technology, but it's a really, really useful way to reach out to people. And it's really about understanding the way people live and fitting into their into their rhythms in an appropriate way. And it's not just in terms of um, content that we try to think about the way readers uh, are, are interacting with us. The Live Hub is essentially a live companion. Um, it was uh, kind of designed to be a companion for the Olympics so that you would have it on your iPad or iPhone or desktop. And it's uh, tweets coming in from our various different commentators, it's news stories and galleries and videos, and it's just pulling everything together in one place in a way that is, uh, it's, it's that companion to the TV experience. For us to be relevant, we have to be in the right place for readers at the right time, and I, I had to give a presentation at News Rewired, and the subject line was um, multi-platform strategies, and I was like, okay, what does that mean? Um, because we don't really have a strategy for the phone and a strategy for the tablet and a different one for the web. We have the same strategy for everything because it's not up to us to dictate to readers what they read, where and when. Anecdotally, I quite often find myself at the bus stop and I'm kind of going through my tweets and, and it'll direct me to a really chunky piece of analysis on something and I'll stand there and I'll read it because I have time and it fits in with my life. And I think quite often... Uh, Discussions often end up saying, oh, you know, long-form journalism is dead because everybody's reading stuff on their phone. And I really, I don't believe that's the case. I think it's about giving readers the choice. So I think in summary, I'd say concentrating the reader really allows us to put 
ourselves in their shoes, in their living room, in their car, or wherever they happen to be. And we're really trying to fi understand what problems are we helping people solve? How are we helping people engage with our journalism? And when you charge for your journalism, you're much more concerned with the impact that it is having on readers. And, and so I think that's, that's really what I would kind of say in summary. Hi, I'm Carolyn from FWD PR. We were talking about when you first went for paid for, there was a lot of negativity. Have you seen that drop in people supporting you? I think we, we were bold and we took a risk and we've learned a lot in that time. Um, my favourite uh, advocate of the paywall is Catalan Moran. I don't know if there's any Catalan Moran fans in this room, but I totally love her. Um, she basically is saying that, um, you know, why, why is it that financial companies have to justify selling stuff? Why do retail companies have to justify st selling stuff? It's very often the arts um, that kind of that end up getting penalised, music being given, given away for free, artwork being given away for free, journalism being given away for free. Why is that? Um, and I think also the, the process of getting stories, you know, that costs something. So there's definitely been a, a, a shift in perception of it. I'm Nina Smith from Cherry London. How would you recommend that PRs reach out to journalists in perhaps a more effective way or is it still conventional releases and contact p and picking up the phone or has it sort of changed? You think that transparency has changed how you engage with journalists. I'd be quite interested to know that. Um, sending a release and following it up with a phone call, you know, and, and making sure that that release is something that will kind of relate to what the publication might want to print is you know, absolutely all the traditional tenets of, of, of good PR still hold. I think it's a fantastic event. I think P PR Newswire are absolutely on the money with this one. It's not the first event I've been to. They, they really are very informative and I think they're current. That's the important thing. This year covered all the pertinent areas for digital media. It's such a big area now and something as you know, as a press officer, that you have to consider about the story of how it's coming across, not only in the print, but also online. Going from print to digital media, how not only have companies changed and transitioned themselves, but also how journalists can, can, can effectively move on and evolve themselves and, and use platforms such as Twitter and social media effectively. I thought it was a brilliant event. Um, I've definitely come again. I hear it's quarterly, so I'll be here the next time. Um, it's an amazing venue, St Paul's Cathedral, you can't really get better than that. It was great, like the location was amazing, the speaker was amazing, and it was a, like, it was about media, digital, like really like up to date and current issue, it was really, like, really cool. As you can hear behind me, there's lots of networking going on, uh, lots of people chatting to each other, exchanging business cards, so it's, it's, you know, it has that dual aspect, which is really good.